So this is my uh, working space where I work with a brand new um, Intel Edison um, development board and I was playing with this for some time now and connected this to a LiPo 3.7 uh, 600 mAh chargeable battery and my plan is to uh, put this into the matchbox to have a complete running server system. To have a proof that the whole thing works, um, I bring you to my screen. Wait a second. And here, let's ping the Edison. And, whoop, oh, yep, yeah, we are online. Let's switch to a browser and go to the Edison server. Yep, it is here. So this means it works. And I can also uh, go to the Helios service. Okay, WebShare works. So I will do a screen recording to uh, go further into details. And in the meantime, I will put this stuff into the uh, matchbox and let's see that we get a great demo about the Intel Edison running the Helios software. So let's put this in here and isolate it a little bit. The module. And very careful the connectors. So I will stop the recording here and uh, be back in a second. Okay, it's now uh, in the box and uh, I will plug it just together and do further testing. We also created a great wiki explaining a lot of details about the Edison and I will get to this later. So we start uh, doing a little tour with the uh, just configured Edison running in a matchbox and the first thing I like to do, uh, I like to ping the device. Okay, it's responding, this looks good. Then uh, let's SSH into the system. And let's look up the Helio services, everything works. And certainly that's a Linux system, so a regular PS is supposed to work. Yep, yeah, here we go. So uh, let's uh, look, go to the uh, web user interface and the Edison has a little uh, device information web page. And now let's switch to our installed WebShare software, which is on port 2009. Let's uh, log in, all running on this tiny Edison and going into the administration and uh, looking to the Java server statistics shows, okay, we are running a Java 1.8 update 25 here on this uh, Edison device, or at least that's what the operating system says. And we can just work in WebShare as uh, knowing this. It was my presentation of our WebShare product going into a SharePoint and Showing some files here. We have some uh, images. I can switch into gallery mode to browse these files. Um, I can open a file. Let's render this by the, by the Edison. That's a 20 megabyte image and it needs to be recalculated, which is done now by the Edison device to a lower resolution. Um, or let's go to this one. This has been pre rendered. Let's look to some more complicated stuff. That's a PDF file and this sits on the server. We render this with our PDF rendering engine and let's enlarge this a little bit. And this is already pre-cached, so uh, this goes very quick for this reason. Let's demand a new version with a different resolution and now the, ren uh, the Edison renders this and I can uh, check this with top. It's running with uh, one CPU fully busy and uh, crunching this PDF file. Here we go. It's uh, changed or it's rendered in this resolution. So this is uh, pretty good. 
So the whole imaging technology here and the server solution, this represents more than 400 men years of work and all this working, running uh, on this little Edison, Edison it's uh, very impressive. So let's switch from WebShare to another part, Helios Admin. And so I can abort this here. We have a remote administration for our servers and uh, Via Bonjour, I can browse the servers. I I'm, uh, have only two around me, the Edison, and connect to this one. And as the password, and uh, here I can see all the server settings. I can configure what is needed, like even the DHCP or Bonjour. Uh, here I see the different share points I created. I can just look to the share and say, okay, it's located on home demo wall. Spotlight is uh, active and indexing. Um, even office indexing and PDF text indexing is included. Mac share name, window share name, additional features. So pretty nice. Um, let's go to the um, quit the admin. Let's uh, use the Mac to connect to the server. I can go to, to connect to server and uh, type in the URL. In this case, it's a bonjour name, edison.local, and log in with a username and password. It's an AFP server. We also have an SMB server. So I can see my files. I can see the same stuff I saw uh, minutes ago via a web user interface here. I can see the same stuff in a, let's have it in a list view, next to the list view in the finder, same uh, information. And so let's do uh, something. Let's do a search for files on the, this volume and look for files being in RGB. Okay, only two. Let's for CMYK, some more. Let's look for a resolution greater 72 dpi. We have some files here. Let's go to greater 720 dpi, only one left over. So that's the uh, spotlight full text search, content search um, available. Let's go back here. Available for Mac clients, Windows clients, and just as a side note, the same thing here I can uh, enter. DPI greater 72 and bang I get my result with the file set and I can change this like I was doing this from a Mac uh, to see only the one little file I just uh, searched for. Okay so let's do two more things. I have uh, so just as a side note, here is my volume that's connected, connected to the Edison with AFP. And as I mentioned, uh, SMB is also available. So let's do two things in the terminal. One is uh, when I enter into an image folder and call our image conversion script. This renders about a gigabyte of data for and back between different color spaces, different formats, PDF rendering, um, resolution changing and all this. And uh, certainly I can see this in the top listing that uh, the image conversion is running and here I see my Edison has a gigabyte of memory. 460 megabytes are used, more than half a gigabyte is available running with all our services. Not bad. Okay, so while this is running in the background, I open another file. We created a wiki and the wiki has been created by Helios to make it more clear what the Edison look like, how it's being connected, how it's being powered and uh, it's a kind of how-to guide and the problem is that most of the information is not available on the Intel website. So we created a documentation, what you finally need, how to set up the Edison, 
uh, when you update the operating system, uh, how it's getting flashed, that's here. Um, some uh, Linux commands, because this Yorkto Linux is very new, things work different, uh, there is a systemd and journaldd, so here um, are some commands how to use this. And there's also a good article to get more free space because we can recover the installation partition. And this gives us another 800 megabyte. Yeah, how to get around with Java 1.8 or not 1.8, it's Java 8 these days. And here we did some little testing. You remember I'm running this image conversion script, converting all the different PDFs into images um, for and back. And this actually needs about uh, yeah about 125 milliampere that's uh, at 3.7 volts which means uh, about a watt and a quarter so that's very very efficient um, we also documented a little bit what kind of rechargeable battery will work and what needs to be uh, changed in terms where you use a special battery with high, higher capacity, actually higher than 1200, needs some modification to completely charge it. Here we have documented you know, some antenna stuff. You can plug in an extra antenna to this device, um, some other information. So, yeah, that's my tour regarding uh, our support for the Intel Edison. We're looking forward to, uh, to meet developers and to exchange uh, information and to make our software available on this device and to get great ideas for the Internet of Things. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Bye.